Greetings, and welcome back to The Fate of Drakenheim. This is the Dungeon Dudes weekly D&D 5e actual play campaign. My name is Monty Martin, running our campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Wilhelm von Kessel, the human swashbuckler rogue, and we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Rudy Whitaker, the shifter elder tonight. And Joe Gorman, playing Wrath, the Azamar warlock. Thanks for joining us once again. As always, Kelly and I create tons of awesome content over on YouTube as well, so you can check out the channel there and make sure to subscribe so you get the latest videos. You can also watch us broadcast the campaign on Twitch on Tuesdays from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. You can check that out at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. And with no further ado, let's dive into the fate of Drakenheim. Drakenheim is no more. The devastation which fell upon that accursed place left a kingdom in ruin. Now, horrors lurking in the haze grow ever more great and terrible, while simmering tensions between rival factions boil over into outright war. The power of monarchs, mages, and priests hangs in the balance. Six unlikely heroes join forces to confront the coming chaos. They shall decide once and for all the fate of Drakenheim. As Pluto, Vale, and Sebastian travel across the space between worlds in their purloined pirated, pirated vessel, we pan back to Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath, who stand in the sanctum of Bruce, where Wrath has received the cat's eye gem from his patron. The eldritch energy of the space around you thrums with power. Something great and terrible has awoken. And the ground shakes and soft tremors reverberate outward into the endless void of churning chaos that surrounds this sanctuary between worlds. What little remains of the great gatekeeper and its minions are but flakes of rusted filings and the golden disc that was, ins that was inscribed upon it. Wrath, you feel the power and closeness of your patron and the words echo in your mind as Bruce's feline form emerges in the space around you and Bruce telepathically says to you you have achieved what no other of my loyal warlocks have ever accomplished. You shall now henceforth be known as my pact master. And all who recognize my power will obey you unquestioningly. There is one near to you, near. You have met her already. She will serve your goals. I am honored to be recognized by you, oh great Bruce. But In... I must insist that it was not I alone who freed you. For it was Rudy and Wilhelm, who also threw away care and concern for their own lives, 
to rescue you. A mastery of your manipulative skills. Well done. <laughs> I didn't even think about it that way. Yeah, I totally fooled you guys. Oh, wait, we're only hearing one side of this conversation. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I, it's just me and Bruce. Just me and Bruce. Wait, what about fooling us? Those fools. <laughs> oh, did I say that out loud? <laughs> Our enemies? What you going on about? Bruce, I... I thank you. As a reward, you may choose the following. Okay. Bruce teaches you an extra Eldritch Invocation of your choice. Ooh. That's huge. So, to capture this on, on your character sheet, you can basically add the Eldritch mm -hmm. Adept feat for free. To oh, your yeah. yeah. And if I already, I, can I take it again? Because I, I technically have already taken it. I'll figure you, it out. You I, can override it, but basically you, you can learn an extra Eldritch oh, Invocation of your choice. Oh, I'm diving in. I'm so diving in. Bruce, that is the greatest gift you've ever given me. More power. <laughs> I can breathe underwater again. <laughs> Choosing. <laughs> Tired of suffocating? No, I don't know. I haven't even looked. Um, mm. The gifts you bestow on me, oh great master, only reinforce my dedication to the cause. And with this gem, I will take it into the inscrutable tower and I will fix. Drakenheim. Certainly. Now, I must ask, this place, it seems to buckle and break. How, we, how may we escape? We must find our exit. Indeed you must, Pactmaster, for the way that you came is not the way that you will return. I have given you all that you need to get back. Worry not. Okay, okay. Not not worried, <laughs> he says. All right, Raph. Uh, are we still in the chamber? Yes, you are. Is the door still there? Um, it is, <laughs> but the doorway just hangs open. The doors just hang open and they just... It doesn't lead back to a hallway anymore. It just looks out into the vast expanse. Are we still in a room or like the, the sky above us is like- The, the room vast... was never like a room per se, right? It was always the sky all, all open and it was a pillared colonnade that kind of bordered yeah. the, the whole thing in, in, in the area. So we're floating in the void of yes. the space between worlds. Yes. Rudy. Yep. Yeah. How are you feeling? Well, terrible, no, as I bleed. Um, no, I mean like your friend. You see above you that you are oh, floating <laughs> nebulas of streaking octarine power reverberate outward from the temple, stretching through the, the vast emptiness of the space between worlds like a beacon but there is no way back that you can determine. Did we take care of him? Did we? D the demon thing inside me? Yes, you destroyed it. Yeah, we destroyed it. Oh, God, I'm, I'm behind. It's been a while since okay. we did that. Scrap that. Yeah, I'm, um, um, I don't know if I'll be able to space fare very, very far as he is. I mean, I'm a little wounded, but this doesn't seem like the time or place for a rest. Oh, I don't think so either. You never know what's going to come our way. Raph, Bruce has given you everything you need to get us home, so hop to it. All right. I'm ready. Yeah, so, um, yep, 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 yep. I'm just like flipping through my uh, tome. Do you not know how to get us home? Bruce no, it's been... in here. It's in here. I, I, I know it's in here, Veo. Uh, I mean, Verdi. <laughs> I'm, I'm uh, distracted. I'm sorry, Verdi. I just, 
all I can think about is cats and 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 being with a cat and there's cats everywhere. Mm. There, I, I, I am. Does does Wrath like Veo? He <laughs> likes cats. I mean, that's fair. <laughs> I guess it's safe to assume that yes, he does like Veo, but. Um. Oh, I don't know. I I'm said in my mind. <laughs> Uh, okay, well... We're... I started, like, kind of pressing the, the walls. I'm kind of, like, looking around, hemming and hawing, really lost in thought as I scramble in also <laughs> real time to try to figure out <laughs> what I'm going to do. I think I might take a, a few crude healing potions at this point. Wrath. Mm. I... I'm, I'm growing concerned. <laughs> Not only with your inability to get us out of this um, room floating in space and time, but also, what did what did we just do? Mm-hmm. We we destroyed every creature in that room that was holding time and space together, and now we're drifting. I we're friends, right? Oh yeah. I, <laughs> I would hope so at this point. I I need you to know that if unleashing Bruce ends up being something that threatens to destroy our reality, there's going to be issues. Why would it do that? Why would serving the greatest and most powerful being to ever enter our world be a bad thing. Uh. Um. Yeah, you're stunned. No, I... The way you just put that, I, it's... it's ve- I, The Sorcerer Kings tried to make deals with demons, dragons, Angels, other creatures, and, and, and through that, great evil was done. There are stories of wizards who have opened holes in reality to allow demonic presences through. Those stories are never good. Not, not a single one of them has been good. Well, except the ones where they let angels through and the angels healed people. Those, those were... Yeah, it's one of those ones then. Um, I <laughs> just, I'm half paying attention as I'm scrambling through my book because I can see like the crumbling and like the the things shaping and I and Rath, wh- there's a sense that I I I I'm I'm starting to worry. I if you have any suggestions too, I'm more than willing to open the. We are floating in nothingness. What suggestions would you like me to give you? You're the magic person who got us here. Bruce brought us here. I just like sit on, I I assume there's steps around Mm. somewhere. Just sit down on the step and I'm like, Wilhelm, just take a moment. Uh, No, I refuse. I'm gonna go to the doors Mm -hmm. and just look out into the great expanse and see if I can find, like, can I see anything nearby, or is it just emptiness? Give me a perception check. You got a 24. Looking out into the expanse, you see a strange ship far in the distance coming towards the temple. Um, we're about to have company. I... Who is it? Pirates? Are there pirates in the space between worlds, Wrath? I have to tell you that as most of this, as we've gone through this temple, I am going by my gut and my feeling. There's a lot I did not know before I entered. I now know more. I don't know what that is. I'm just trying to try this new thing about the honesty between us told Bruce you did really well. He seemed pretty satisfied with it. Bruce speaks 
It is one of the dark ships of Aegonach. Upon from that world of Aegonach, with shadows no cat can endure, so that all in all that cold twilight realm there is not a cheering purr or a homely mew. These beings on these ships have a hint of the outer space which I do not like. Beware the dark ships of Aegonach. We must be cautious. They could be dangerous. In fact, if there is any sense of trouble, we should attack it from afar. And maybe we can use that ship to escape. Mm. Maybe if we... Uh, what if we were able to uh, get the jump on it? Should we surprise attack him just in case? Yes. The Wilhelm surprise <laughs> will hide. When the ship comes to this place looking, we will jump out, we will stab whoever was on that boat in the back, mm. take their ship, commandeer it, mm. and sail where? We sail towards another door. There are many doors in and out of the place between worlds. Mm. We've traveled here before, but in smaller places. In, in, and we've seen these doorways. We may have created a bigger one. Mm. There could be a way up. This might be our only chance. All right, oh. everybody, I'll we do need to hide. Um, should we flank the doors? I'm gonna, yeah, we'll flank the doors. <laughs> Raph, get behind a pillar or something. <laughs> hide. Um, I, yeah, uh, I'm gonna, yeah, I guess there was like, there's a couple of pillars. There's the altar at the end. I'm gonna hide behind the altar. Okay. Well, as you hide behind the altar and await the sh oncoming ship, I think this is an appropriate moment for the three of you to make a costume change. <laughs> <laughs> Are you the one? Driving the ship? I yeah, he's, he's just doing that. The, the, the faceless being is. Oh. It, 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 yes. <laughs> You're totally <laughs> just doing that. With you know, you know what? Like, at, at, like some like parks for kids, they have like the little wheels. There's like one of those, and I'm just like next to the captain with my own wheel, like trying to <laughs> learn. <laughs> captain Sebastian, helming the ship. What are we naming our ship? The the faceless one growls. <laughs> and says, this is not your ship, it is mine. I am merely giving you passage through these lands. Do you remember when we turned your friend into a floating rock? I recall. What are we going to name our ship, guys? <laughs> I mean, what do I you think... name your ship? What is your ship called? That's a very good question. <laughs> <laughs> so you no one's ever asked me that before. <laughs> Never had to name my ship before. What kind of a captain doesn't name his ship? I think we should call it, I mean, it's a classic, but we should call it the Friendship. The Friendship? It's a classic. It never goes wrong. Can't say no to that. <laughs> I, all right. Friendship. Welcome to the Friendship. And it's great because we're on our way to rescue our friends, <laughs> and they will be so happy to see us. I mean, especially if we rescue them. I mean... They probably don't even know we're on our way. <laughs> They're going to be so happy, guys. They're going to be so surprised. <laughs> That's what they're going to... We're going to get them. They're going to be so surprised. Should we, like, surprise them? Should we, like, sneak we off the boat? We should jump out. What if, okay, wait, guys. What if we pretend that we're, like, angry pirates? And we, like, come barging through and we're like, Oh, we're here to kidnap you. And then, surprise. Should I actually... disguise self and pretend to be a pirate? That would be hilarious. Yeah. And take some, like, insectoid guts and, like, put it on my... The, the being says... This is no friend ship. This skiff is the Void Chaser, and I am its captain, Zudin. I don't know, on the side of the <laughs> ship here, and I'm gonna cast, um, it, does it, is it Mold Earth? Shapes, colors are both to appear in the dirt or stone. I guess this is, this ship's not made of stone. Uh, I can, um, press to digitate, uh, a, a color, small marker, symbol. <laughs> it says in your mind, do you already defile my craft with your presence, oh. mortals? Yeah, it says friendship on the side now. I mean, void chaser though, like 
You, it, the creature has no expression on its face, but if it could make a scornful expression, it would. I mean, Void Chaser's pretty cool. I have to agree that it's actually pretty cool. Yeah. It's hard to just... Do we like to chase voids? Is that a is that a good... I mean, it's kind of one of my favorite pastimes, but... Yeah, I'll take the voids. All right. Fine. Void Chaser. Thank you, Zudin. Captain Sebastian's Void Chaser. Can I get upgraded from Lieutenant? I feel like there's an option. Can I be co-admiral? Yeah. You know, admiral's above captain. What? <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can, Pluto. Join me in our admiral ship. I'll be sub-admiral. <laughs> what is this? Did I'll I just be right become under... the lowest ranked? For some reason, captain. <laughs> I don't want to be captain anymore. Now don't steer the ship, captain. All right. <laughs> Wait, to be admirals, we need more than one boat. Are there more boats around this void that we can take over? Do you have a fleet? I think we should focus. <laughs> I think our friends are... Uh, Zudin says, Many are the ships of Iganok, the cold realm where I come from. Yeah, sounds unpleasant. Um, do you guys, like, what do you, what do you do out here? Are you hunting? We fought some, like... Giant squid crabs earlier. Do you, is that like, are you fishing? Yes, we, in as you mortals understand it, we sail the seas of the void of the space between worlds, searching for sustenance mm. and other treasures. Treasures. Mm. Oh wait, we've never even checked. Is there like a deck below? Yeah. Um, I'm gonna go down there. Is there treasure? <laughs> Beneath the deck are various crates, cages, and other containers with creatures of curious countenance and strange composition. It is unclear whether they are prey or prisoner. Are there any that are humanoid? Only in the most broad and inclusive definition of the term humanoid. Mm. Beyond the cages that contain these creatures, as I walk through this like zoo from another world, are there any crates that are not filled with things? Are there are a few are empty things? manacles and other clasps. There are approximately eight creatures kept here um, of various sizes and shapes. Um, so most with descriptions better left to the imagination or perhaps best left undescribed entirely for their bizarre and shifting forms and the noises that they make disturb the mind and unsettle the soul. Mm. Whether they are being carried here like cattle or passengers is uncertain. Are there, there's other manacles. Yes, in here, yeah. and, and, and chains built in various sizes to, and many of which end in more muzzles to contain creatures of shapes that do not correspond to any anatomy that you would be familiar with. Pass me some humanoid sized manacles. <laughs> Good to have on, you never know. That's what I was thinking. Like, uh, and do these manacles, like if I give Veo a pair of manacles, do they look magical in nature or are they pretty standard? They're made of a strange and alien metal and the entire craft radiates a certain magic. But that is not saying much in this space that where certainly within this space between worlds, there is nothing that isn't magic. For the stuff of this space itself is magic in its raw and purest form. Uh, so there's a bunch of like 
I'm not even gonna, I don't even know if I have a word to describe what's going on down there, but there's some prisoners, probably is the best term, or prey, or passengers, um, down there in cages and manacles and stuff. Um, I didn't think I found anything valuable beyond living cargo. Are living people not valuable? I mean, they're not people. I poke my head down. Ah. Yeah, and uh, I don't know, was there any like weapons that they seized from them? Um, I'm, I'm trying to find like the, what do you want to call it? Like the, the contraband container. The best that you can surmise from the nets and tridents these creatures bore, this is the equivalent of a fishing boat that you just knocked over. <laughs> yep. <laughs> we definitely are the pirates. <laughs> yeah, we're totally pirates. Ooh, Space pirates. I would pick up some of those manacles. You never know when you're gonna use them. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. take some... Uh... Like, there were, there were not barrels, but large pots in below that had essentially, remember those winged creatures that were flying about? There was just like a net containing a bunch of them like that had been caught. Grab them. <laughs> what about, um, like what's the food source? What are they, what are the, I guess it's these, you know what? Should we release them? Do we let they, them? They, 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 it says, we get them for wing night. <laughs> <laughs> Do we let them go, or do we just like? I don't I mean, think it's any of our. We I don't know what those are. They worked hard to get them, I guess. We can give them their boat back. We I'd killed over half their crew. I'd be really bad, mad if they stole our food. So. I mean, I thought that they were angry pirates. They're they're fisher people, and they were just fishing. And For they us. Just to be clear, we're well, the fish in this scenario. If you yeah, were a fish I against mean, the- We've done the same to the fish people on our end. We so. ate blip blurp. <laughs> can't really, can't really uh, fault so, them on this. I understand survival of the fittest, yeah, yeah. you know? Okay, okay. We okay. are not in- Cut from the same cloth? Yeah, we're, not, we're not in our home. They were just fishing and we were weird creatures floating on a rock. Yep. We just happened to be pretty powerful weird creatures. Yep. And now we own their boat for the time being. Mm -hmm. So we're giving it back after. Maybe I'm starting to like not hate these these f folk. I mean, they would probably kill us and, and capture us if they had the chance. So. Yeah, but they could try. But we literally just decimated half their party with minimal effort. Yeah. So if they try anything, we uh, blast them off into space and leave them there to die. So, and I'm saying this loud enough that they can hear me, so they know that. You're um, looking right at them. Yeah, I'm literally looking at you and saying like it. I can read your thoughts, mortal. <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> You're thinking about betraying me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. Um, I think we should uh, then, I guess we get ready for the boarding, the landing party. I also, I, mm -hmm. I, I just want to bring this up before we get there. What happened? What did those three do? Well, how do we know that they did something? Yeah. I mean, maybe they just showed up here and... How do you know it was Rudy and Wilhelm? Clearly we can assume it's Rath, but... <laughs> Can't punish all three! <laughs> also, like, what if they were trying to stop something and they... Failed? Failed. It's true. Like, I... I we need to find them. We I need, mean, I, we definitely need to find Wilhelm. And, and we need answers on what happened here because... I don't know, this doesn't look like a normal quarry to me. Maybe it was never a normal quarry. You pass through a place where many gods have come to die. This is a graveyard for beings whose whispers were long left unheard. Yet now, something awakens over there. Over there, like pointing towards the towards light? Towards where you travel. Oh. Perhaps oh. it means our doom, but if it does, I will bargain with it and offer it you in exchange for my safety. It will accept, for a mortal soul is quite valuable here. I don't have my soul. My mom kind of has that, I think. 
Do we know where my soul is? Did we, we ever get confirmation? Have we figured that like my mom had it, the demon has it? Somebody has my soul, and it's not me, so I'm not really worth much here. So or I'm like a husk. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's like an empty clam. <laughs> like no no pearl in there. Even one mortal soul will be enough to satiate beings of the void. Oh no. Guys, you should have let me bet your souls a while ago. Like you wouldn't have had <laughs> oh, them anymore. Yeah, you totally did. I should Nevertheless. I don't even you Forgot wish to that. sail towards your doom, mm. then that is that is what you ask, and I will do as you have asked. We have made a bargain. If that's where our friends are, then yeah, let's go. We True. gotta go. I feel like we often sail towards mm. our doom, and yet the no is over. <laughs> I've been sailing towards my doom for fifteen years. I haven't sailed much. At the nexus of all the energy, the ship comes towards a strange temple to some sort of feline being. It is lined with a colonnade. It begins with a doorway that enters from nowhere and enters into the temple proper where there is a grand altar. The remains of some clockwork beings lay scattered about and rifts in time and space appear and disappear spontaneously around the pillars that form this space. Pillars that resemble the towers made to give cats their play spaces. Mm. As you fly in close, Zudin brings the ship in slowly. I need you one of us down the ship. I mean, we don't want them leaving without us. Yeah. I'm assuming this is a place of significance to where we've been going. I mean, this looks like a Wrath Temple, if I ever saw one. <laughs> or a Veo Temple. A, a this temple, is a to temple me? for you. <laughs> I mean, maybe. Me. My mm. people? The cat people? Yeah. There's got to be food here. It's at this moment that Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath can see that Sebastian, Veo, and Polluter are on the ship. So what happens? <laughs> Who am I? Wrath pokes his head out and is like, I told them to come, I fixed it! <laughs> this was my idea all along! Wrath, you had no idea they were coming! I kinda did! Um, is the plan. <clears throat> is the plan to attack them no longer happening? <laughs> I don't think we need to attack our friends who came to... No, it's... What are they doing here? Bruce must have contacted them and told them where we are. I, he saved us. I come out from my hiding spot on the side of the door and wave. Friends? Uh, did... Did Bruce send you? Did Bruce send us? I need somebody to answer. <laughs> <laughs> we came to find you! From where? From the temple! What? Yes. <laughs> I suppose that makes some sense. We're pirates now! We stole a ship! Come on, get ready, jump on! We're gonna get out of here! Um. I turn to <laughs> Rath and Rudy. Mine's <laughs> an easy switch. <sighs> We're rescued, are you ready? <sighs> Thank you, Bruce. You have really, truly outdone yourself. We have to get out of here. I do not know how much longer this place will stay uh, what's, together. What's but, going to happen? I do not know. But we, I believe whatever we did destabilized something about the space and time. You felt the tremors. Whatever was holding Bruce was very powerful. And just by unleashing those bonds, we've created some kind of vibration or or reverberation throughout the cosmos. 
I think it's time that we leave and get back to our space in existence. All yeah. right, let's get on this boat. <laughs> I get on the boat. All right, Wilhelm, Rudy, and Wrath get back on the ship. And our heroes are all reunited once more. There's a bunch of hugging. Who are these folks with the uh, the no face and the bug? <laughs> oh, this is um, uh, this is uh, Captain uh, Z- Zoo Zoomy Zoomies. Captain Zoom. Zuden. No, not gonna remember that. Um, <laughs> this is our boat. Um, possibly the friendship, maybe the void chaser. <laughs> I haven't determined that yet. And this is a large insectoid creature who I've not asked their name yet. What's what's your name, insectoid creature? <laughs> there you go. Good luck with the pronunciations. It's good to see you guys again. What happened? Uh, Wrath, would you like to explain uh, how we got here and what's going on? Yeah, Wrath, what's up? We have recovered the family heirloom, but it is not an heirloom. No, she has deceived us. Yeah, we were onto that. We've <laughs> literally been there for days watching her be deceptive. Um, we discovered that Bruce, my, my master, was imprisoned by these mechanical machines made of gold and steel that were trapping him. We have freed him from his uh, timely bonds, and now he has gifted upon me not only a great and powerful name, but a new purpose to save Drakenheim. Roth, I gotta ask you a question. What does that mean? What does that mean that you've, 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 you've freed him? Can you be more specific? It appeared that there was some kind of, some kind of uh, bonds that, that, that held him in place for eons. Eons, mm, mm. The, the, they, they tormented him. Mm-hmm, they kept mm-hmm. him in an eternal slumber, but we, Rudy, Wilhelm and I, we, we were able to defy all odds mm-hmm. and solve not only the riddles of the crypt, but then we discovered the final resting place of Bruce and freed him from the, his, his slavers. And, and, and you said that Bruce is gonna save Drakenheim? You're gonna save Drakenheim? Yes, it is a long story, but very simply, there is a balance between rats and cats. And that balance is out of, out of order. Yeah, keep going. I keep mean, going. yes, I mean, not any of our fault, of course. Right, right, Sebastian? Not our fault that well, rats are uh, rats. Is, they take over. This is doing me concern. Time. And when I say rats, I mean literally and figuratively. The rats, the monsters, the delirium, the terrible curse that has been put on the city. When I bring Bruce back, Mm-mm. he will. He will save Drakenheim. No. He will. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wrath. It has been written. Wrath. You must understand. Listen. It has been written that in in our time of need, the people, the humans, who had been cast out by the old gods, those who did not believe us to be pure and good followers, good devotees, they cast us out and they would have been rid of us, but we, in our hour of need, called out, and Bruce, in all of his glory, heard that call and came to our rescue. And for then, and only then, were we saved by creating a a relationship that allowed us to care for Bruce and Bruce to care for us. And they, those evil machines that imprisoned him, they took away what is, what is rightfully ours. And now we have taken that back, our power, our need of Bruce. This is the time 
of Bruce. You're saying our a lot. Um, yes, Rudy and Wilhelm, they believe in my cause. I, I, I look and Wilhelm's like... <laughs> <laughs> um, they helped me. They helped me free him. It was only with their help that I was able to accomplish my goal. This is going to sound crazy coming from me because I'm a person who generally creates problems, but having a lot of experience with creating problems, Wrath, I need to emphasize the fact that when you bring a problem in to solve another problem, that's how I ended up with rats in Drakenheim. I tried to control the rats to destroy the Queen of Thieves. Now, Drakenheim is full of rats. You bring cats in to destroy the rats, we just end up with a Drakenheim full of cats. But you are not the Rat Master. I. And you are not the cat. The Pat Master. <laughs> oh, the, right, the guy, the guy said that. Yeah. I and only I can control Bruce. You were not ready. It is okay, you Sebastian. You can control Bruce? One day you will be you will be strong enough. Raph, you can't control anything. You have no control. You have no control here. You have no control over Bruce. You never have. You are being used to unleash something dangerous. And I mean, I can tell you as one being to another, I recognize what insatiable hunger is. Uh, <laughs> Kind of thinking about letting this go on Drakenheim. It's a bit worrying because who says that hunger isn't going to turn towards us? What happens if the cats decide to eat you? Oh, Bruce would never eat me. I'm his loyal companion. Do you know how many how many loyal servants Bruce probably has all over the world? Yeah, you're the pack master for now until he decides to devour you and absorb your power or something, and then I don't know. Eat everything? Eat the world? What? One way or another, we're destroying the planet. Either it's getting destroyed by delirium, destroyed by cats, destroyed by rats. I don't know. This seems like a bad idea. We are floating in nothingness because you unleashed something. There are tremors outside. I don't know if this stops here. I don't know what the reverberation of this, of this situation is. I'm shocked that I'm the one lecturing here, but I feel like, Wrath, you're going to learn lessons the hard way, and from somebody who continually learns lessons the hard way, I was hoping you were smarter than that. You will not lecture me, you hypocrites. You overstep your bounds within the cosmos consistently. I have heard of the exploits of Sebastian Crow. Fair. So I will not be told what I can and cannot do with my patron, my master. I am the Pact Master, and he is going to serve our purpose to save this world. If you have better ideas, I am gladly welcome to hear them, but I have seen this city erupt into chaos, and I am only here to save you. It's like looking into a mirror, Wrath. <laughs> this is the problem. I'm not lecturing you because I know better. I'm lecturing you because I've had to deal with this. And I thought, I hoped that you were better than me. Now listen, I know this seems a bit odd, a bit out of our control. And I get it, it seems- Are you Rudy right now? I am. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the, the ears the and the voice. <laughs> it seems a bit odd, but you know what? So far since, my journey in, in, in into Drakenheim, we have been dealing things with things outside of all of our control. There's nothing about this situation with Drakenheim that is in our control or what's going to be. Now, I will say, I don't know if I fully, I definitely have not fully put my faith in Bruce. But what I have seen in this temple is that there might be a solution, not fully. <laughs> But there might be something that'll at least help us that isn't totally against us. Okay, fine. I hear you from one problem causer to another. I like where your head's at, kind of, sort of, not really, but we'll say I do. Wrath, if this goes sideways, you're on the line with the Academy, 
with your family, with us, we need to start fixing our mistakes and not making more mistakes. It's that time that, that, that we, need to, we need to try to pull something together and maybe this is it. But if this goes sideways, I, I see two possibilities. I'm gonna lay this out for you. You've got a group of friends here. You've got a world out there. If this goes sideways, you're either with us or you're with Bruce. And you're gonna have to make that choice. You don't have to make it right now, because I know what you're going to say right now. It's not. I'm not going to like it. I'm just saying this has a lot of, a lot of red flags for me. And I'm the king. Of, causing absolute disaster with red flag situations that I just think are super cool. What? This is this is this is just replacing rats with cats. Well, Sebastian, I'm... know that, something obviously put this cat. To, to rest. At one point, from what I can tell and what we've seen on these murals, that the cats were here, but where'd they go? Something got them down. Something has been containing them here. So I think, as much as we're like, oh my, we're letting it loose, but there likely is a way to put it back if we need to. So if we could use proofs to, I don't know, help us with this rat problem, because the rats aren't going to give us any any pause, you know? Literally. Maybe, the cats will give us pause. Literally. Maybe there is a way to stop them, and I turn to uh, Pluto and give him a wink. And he blushes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, it, it. when there was no good solution, I, I, I don't... I don't think this is the only way. I just think it's a good chance that we might be able to actually do something about these problems. Sebastian, if for a moment you can imagine yourself in my shoes, standing where I stand, with the power to do real change, quickly, efficiently, and something that has been taken away from us for generations, would you not try? And I need you to ask yourself in your very deepest heart, in the truth that brought you to this place, would it not be you that stands against that evil with something like Bruce behind you and ask for us to trust you? Yep. You got me. Um, what's the worst that could happen? Bingo. All right, Raph. Now, before we do anything else, we need to get out of here. Mm. Luckily, Captain Sebastian Crow has got you covered. As well as Admiral and Co-Admiral. Co-Admiral <laughs> of the ship. I liked Admiral better than Lieutenant. <laughs> the so. Void Chaser carries you back from the Temple of Bruce to the gateway that you use to enter the space between worlds. There your companion, the captain, says, This is the end of the ride. Leave my ship and return to your world. Yes, sir, Zooms. Thanks for uh, the ride. Sorry about your crew. Uh, happy fishing. <laughs> Hop off. You reappear in the crumbling temple. The deep cracks and fissures growing worse as the tremors oh. shake the area. Heading back up the stairs to the surface, you emerge just as the two surprised dwarves, to, to see the two surprised dwarves. You're all alive by the ancestors. I never would have thought it. 
I'm still surprised myself, to be honest, that we get out of this <laughs> in the shape that we are. <clears throat> Teamwork is the key to achieving the unachievable, as me and my comrades have proven countless times this mission. You two are still alive. The six of us are still alive. I'd say that all things considered, sorry about all of the people that had to die, um, but I would be grateful that this group of people survived not only an infestation, but a rift in reality. A lot's happened, says Dr. Catton. We should scavenge what we can, what remains of the camp, and go back to Helig. I don't think the Duchess will get what she wanted, but at least a, f at least a few of us have our lives. I'm still concerned about the tremors. Is this place going to continue to be an issue? We don't know. Hurt says, this God's forsaken place can collapse into the earth for all I care. <sighs> I mean, it probably will at this point. <laughs> I'm, uh, Raph, what do you know? Like, I mean, this whole mission, you've basically known nothing. So it's, it's, it's been of little help, but I, I'm, I continue to ask you anyway, because you're the, you're the leading expert on this sort of stuff mm -hmm. with your minimal knowledge. Mm -hmm. What, is there a chance that we're breaking reality here? Is this crumbling going to cause any sort of, I don't know, rupture in reality? We have to worry about something else coming through, essentially. And then we got two fronts of magical things happening in Drakenheim in here. Is the the stairway closed? The stairway is still open, but parts of it are beginning to collapse on the inside. And the the watcher that was there is stoically seeming to wait for it to entomb him. I think we give this place a wide berth. We just kind of move and see, just just let it collapse and kind of just observe that. I don't want, I want to make sure something doesn't come through. Yeah, I'm worried about it making, just eating everything and making its way towards Heat League. That is another concern. Um, but if it does that, then we are in a drastic situation of world ending nature. It's going to be fine. It, you this know seems... this. <laughs> yeah. I believe it will be contained by, just as it was uh, eons ago. And until something comes to awaken it, which it won't, because we have freed the prisoner, Bruce, uh, it will simply be a tomb to uh, all those who came before me and failed. All right. I'm going to grab my things and kind of like walk to the outer <laughs> perimeter. Yeah, let's get, but we can get some distance. Like yeah, that's yeah. totally fine. Yeah. 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 Totally mm -hmm. get some distance. And then I'm going to watch it collapse. Let's stand, uh, like stand in a row on like the edge of the, <laughs> of the pit and watch it like. <laughs> yeah. 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 It is quite some time, but eventually it does. I'll take some bets on when it's going to go. It Come collapses on. into and, and is no more. Pluto hands Veo like twenty gold. <laughs> you you stand kind of a, over over a hill on the snow, and eventually the staircase is the first to collapse, breaking, and and the whole sort of chimney, the the uh, the column that forms on underneath, collapses, and eventually the entire quarry becomes a sinkhole, which sinks deep into the earth and is buried. But nothing comes out. No. Good. Okay. Whatever structure was underground has collapsed and been buried. Is Bruce here? Yeah, Bruce is with, with Ra. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> well. I guess it is what it is now. We go back to healing. Your, think your cousin, just probably tell her what's going on. We might need to have some stern words with Sophia. 
Um, she sent us here for a family heirloom. It was not a family heirloom. It was not a family heirloom. We were lied to, <clears throat> and also, my cousin seems to have magic. Yes, and she will listen. She will devote your armies to you, Wilhelm. She will tell us what she knows about yeah. her creature. Wrath, there's a problem. If she is mageborn or could be conceived as mageborn, we're trying really hard to land an alliance with Illyria. If they get word that we leave her on a throne, they're going to go straight to war against us. And all is lost on that front. Then it is up to you. We can conceal Strictly her Strictly speaking, the enforcement of the Edicts of Lumen proceeds up the feudal hierarchy, which means that in for that it is on Wilhelm. <laughs> like generally through, throughout history, the times when Mageborn have tried to claim noble titles, that you it you have to imagine it up the chain, right? But if I didn't do something about it, then... If you didn't do something about someone that was under your control, that could spiral out of control. But Wilhelm is the first one on the order of checks and balances, and the responsibility falls to Wilhelm to deal with it. Yeah, but I imagine that if I didn't deal with it, the Silver Order would be angry. So that is up to you. And and potentially other nobles in Westamar. Right. Right? It's it's bear in mind it's it's not just Illyria that is always the one enforcing the edicts. Mm. It is something that under the terms of the treaty is meant to be a shared responsibility. Right. Question. Was she actually a mageborn though? It's Less about if she was born with magic and more she could be conceived as being magical. Technically, Wrath isn't mage born, but he's a member of the Academy, and if you gave My him. My parents an, are mages. If we gave you a noble title, <laughs> it would cause all sorts of problems. Understandable. I do not seek the nobility, hmm. nor should I hold it. Hmm. Although I think it does factor. To you, Wilhelm, you can decide whether we keep this a secret. She could be a powerful ally, and she will follow you, as I have deemed. Although, if you wish to, if you can, are concerned about the fallout between yourself and Illyria, then we must find a replacement. I might, I might have an idea. Let's head back to Helic, and we'll sort it out. What do you think, Rudy? I don't know. I think we have some questions to ask her first and figure out. I think she's clearly not been truthful with us from the beginning, and she needs to be held responsible for that, too. Lying to the king, future king. I can teleport us back. <laughs> Will it hurt as much as last time? I did not quite enjoy that. I actually, um, actually, before I do, I'm, I'm gonna need to sleep for a while. Oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. been a long, long day. How much time has passed since we went into the space between worlds? Like, did, did time change at all? Um, in fact, from speaking with Ert and Dr. Catton, they, for them, only a few hours has passed, oh. but the journey that you had in the space between worlds felt like considerably longer. Did it feel longer? Or was it actually longer? 
Time flows differently in the space between worlds, and a journey of aeons can unfold in minutes in the real world, mm. but just as often it can be the inverse, and what can feel like a short amount of time in the space between worlds can cause mortals to emerge out of time. Um, were we on the boat in the space between worlds long enough to have taken a long rest? I gotta say, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Long rest? Yeah, sure. Ooh. For everybody? For yeah. everybody. We took one on the, uh, on the ship coming back. In that case, I can teleport us back. Yay. Okay. That's huge. Yeah. Hopefully it doesn't... Do you have something from Helig? I literally have a teleportation circle in Helig. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. You have it. <laughs> Where did you get a teleportation circle? Oh, ho, ho. yeah, about that. Oh, yeah, about that. Well, I have questions for Fifi, too. Sophia? Fifi? Mm -hmm. Whatever her name is. Yeah. Um... Uh. <sighs> Yeah, did we, we never talked about, what did you guys find in her bedroom? Right. What did we find in her bedroom? Fail. All right. What did we find? We found uh, magic is what we found. So we found magic. We found a teleportation circle. Mm -hmm. In the we, basement. In the basement. We found a lot of costumes and hats. Costumes. <sighs> Queen of Thieves. <laughs> yes. Right? Oh, I knew it. And... Rudy, I'm really sorry. We can't trust Reyna. What do you mean you can't trust Reyna? Reyna is trustworthy as she gets! Reyna has been here for I don't know how long. Now, no, I'm not saying Reyna isn't trustworthy. What are you saying? I am saying... He's playing common. The Queen of Thieves <laughs> has in the past disguised herself as people that we trust, taken control of people that we trust, and used those people to manipulate us. Reyna asked to come on this trip with us. I said no. She might be angry about that, but... I'd be surprised she's angry about a lot of things. I can't trust her. I can't trust Sophia. We can't trust anybody. Like, you can't trust her because you think she is the Queen of Thieves, or you can't trust her because you think the Wilhelm's cousin is the Queen of Thieves, or you think you can't trust her because the Queen of Thieves might have a spy there. Yes. <laughs> one of those. Which one? Because I can. I have lots of different ways that I can make sure Reyna is Reyna. Well, I don't know which one of those it is. We left our investigation to save you guys. So right now, we left with the knowledge, and nobody knows, by the way, that we were in there. So zip it on that. That's a secret. All right? But how are we going to get back? if we have to come out of that place anyways where the teleportation circle is. Good point. They're gonna know we're in there anyways. Fair. And then we will confront them about their alliance with the Queen of Thieves. And what if it is the Queen of Thieves? Are you putting my daughter at risk? Your daughter is already at risk and her being in Helig means that she's involved in this and we don't know what's at stake yet. We don't know if she can be trusted. We don't know if she is being lied to. Mm. We don't know. And the fact that we don't know means that we can't rely on it. So when we go back there, all that we have is each other versus Helic. And we need to be very careful about how we approach this situation. All right, but I'm putting down a rule. No matter what happens, even if she's been lied to, even if she's not on... Our side. Don't, none of you hurt my daughter. I mean it. Rudy, I swear to you, I will do everything in my power to protect Reyna and save her if she's in trouble. All right. Rudy, I have a strong su suspicion that if Sophia is the one that is controlling her, she will release the grasp and it will free her from her mm. bonds. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't know if that's the case, but I'm just saying, regardless of what happens, containment, no weapons. We will not hurt her. She is, she, she will be unheard. 
and hurt. She's not gonna hurt, I'm not gonna hurt her. No one's gonna hurt her. Don't hurt her. We're not gonna hurt her. That's fine. But I think we must understand the depth of this treachery. I believe she is simply acting in good intentions, but misled. I agree. Raph, you're, you, you've been speaking a lot about, okay, so you've been given the, the rank of Pact Master. <laughs> Correct. Um, and you seem to imply that you will be able to tell Sophia what to do. If she is one that also follows Bruce and sent us on this quest and failed, she will be the one that will bow to me. If that's the case, then she should be unable to withhold information mm. that she might have mm. about the Queen of Thieves if the Queen of Thieves is involved in this. Mm, costumes. Costumes and hats. Yes, Sounds... I'm not totally sold on this whole idea. I do not understand this fascination with the Queen of Thieves. I mean, Sebastian has a thing. Listen, she's everywhere and in everything and trying to cut, always undermine what we're trying to achieve. She's gonna undermine Bruce, okay? If you let her get in. <laughs> the, the, listen, <laughs> Katarina and I have had a few chats. She's I will say she is misguided and she is making some really bad choices, but she's not this all powerful super being that you make her out She's to. pretty powerful and she always seems to be a step ahead. Well, she is a Von Kessel. I mean, I give her credit for the amazing things she's done, but I'm just saying, she's very misguided in, in, in the direction that she's putting these powers and plans. Fair. You three seem to have a much bigger issue with the Queen of Thieves than we have. We, she's been a thorn in our side a few times, but also she came to our aunt's, her mother's funeral, and we got along fine other than some... Have her try to murder you with a, 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 a dinosaur and, and see how you come out. Listen, Rudy was just <laughs> saying that Rena's off the table because it's her daughter. You need to remember that this is my cousin. Mm -hmm. This is my family. So far you have two cousins, that one of them trying to murder a lot of people and take over the throne, the other one who has been following the same cat god that, that you I'm know, not saying I'm proud of my family. <laughs> just, I'm just saying that they are. Fa I, I also, like, my aunt was a monster. My cousin is a different type of monster. And my other cousin might be Wrath 2.0. Just not really give any points to the lineage. My father was a headless <laughs> demon. <laughs> my, like, my distant, like, second aunt twice removed was a vampire monster. Mm-hmm. Are we sure why? we want this guy on the throne? <laughs> right. Why, why is like... every Von Kessel-related person that's still alive other than me a monster? It's, it's not fair. <laughs> I'm just saying that's why we're trying to put you on the throne, but don't give any of the other ones credit <laughs> just because Von Kessel. Dealing with family is hard. <laughs> All right. You're right. It is hard. It is hard. I understand. I got lots of personalities in my family, but you still got to hold them accountable for their actions. And we must, unfortunately, hold Reyna accountable for her actions. As long as her actions are due to her misinterpretation, you know. She Again, might, no she harm. Might have been, she might have been. I don't know what her role is in this. I just don't want us going all, you know. As I would say, axe to the head in, in this situation. Ask questions first is all I'm asking. Says the lady <laughs> who has never asked questions first. I only, I ask questions first. I, when it's your I, family. <laughs> no, 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 no. I take. There was another family. You chopped their heads off without even blinking. When? Literally right. when we started our adventure. <laughs> this brain so. exploded. <laughs> Are you heading back to Helix? <laughs> are, are we? Sebastian starts casting teleport while everybody's arguing about family matters. Yep. And it starts okay. to swirl all around and our. Are we going to the teleportation circle? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. Sebastian grew tired. He. <laughs> Didn't you have like a piece of cheese or something from the, a bottle of wine? Did you not keep anything else from like just from Helix? I got a teleportation circle. I have like a free ticket. You know, you're that. <laughs> okay. 
So you teleport the group back to Healy. With the teleport spell and to a tur- circle, it is unerring, and you're able to bring everyone, including the dwarves, back with you. Mm. You arrive back in the hidden chamber in the wizard's tower of Healing's castle. You rem- recall that guards were posted outside the door. Do you intend to slink out, or do you care if you disturb them? I don't care. How are we all gonna <laughs> slink out? We're not. I don't think it's possible. Yeah, we just, we burst the door. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> At this point, it's like there's no sneaking. Like we're we're going in. Yeah. We have our cards. It's not the best hand, but we're gonna play it anyway. Mm. Okay. Bursting out of the door, the two guards posted there are immediately shocked, but they recognize um, Wilhelm immediately, and they say, "Your Majesty, how did you get in?" There. <laughs> Who, what, what's going on? We have important business to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind how we, uh, Sebastian actually is like, academy stuff. Magic Tower, academy. Right, right. We'll, we'll, we'll notify Duchess Sophia that you have returned immediately. Is she in the throne room? No, but we, she will. She will see you there. Will one one of the two guards s- stays at the, their post while the other goes to fetch Duchess Sophia to come back to the Great Hall to meet with you? How would you like to do this? I think all six of us are going to be in the throne room waiting, plus the dwarves. Yeah. Rack, okay. you said you have some sort of power or something or to talk to her, she'll follow you. Do you want to speak first? Yes, I will ask her her true intentions. All right. Okay. You head to the great hall of Castle Helig. There, it is a long hall uh, with several great tables that are laid and a massive hearth that heats the entire room. I need a, a bit of warmth in an otherwise cold castle. The house staff do offer some wine and food as you wait for Duchess Sophia to arrive. A short while later, she steps into the room wearing uh, her regal finery with a kind of a fur-lined uh, slip over her shoulders uh, and and carrying her cat in her hands. As she enters the room, she smiles wickedly and drops the cat to the floor. It leaps from her hands as Bruce walks towards the cat. And the two cats are like a cat walking towards itself in a mirror. And as they walk through each other, their forms switch. And the cat that was Bruce walks through the cat that was with Sophia. And there's like this merging of the forms, like a mirror, two mirrors colliding. And then the cat walking back towards Sophia has the shape that it, of her own cat, and the cat walking towards Wrath has the shape of, of Bruce. Yeah. And so Sophia immediately gestures towards her staff to leave the room. They walk out, and not a moment later, she says, to wrath. So you've done it, Packmaster. Yes. It is done. He is free. Incredible. I must admit that I am jealous that it is you, but it is for the best. 
you were only able to start the quest. It would it was I who must who had to end it. Very well. But he is free now. Mm. I have taken away his bonds and he can now become what he is supposed to be. I have searched so long and Rudy, your daughter was such a help in finding this place. Without her, I don't think we ever would have found it. Did she know what you were doing here? I must admit I wasn't entirely honest with her. I told her I was looking for something important to my family and that was not a lie, but it was more important to me than anything else. And I think it will be a key to what you want to achieve too, cousin. How so? This being that Wrath calls Bruce, that I know is Dinah, and that others have known by a hundred names, has been a friend to humans since our earliest days. It has given us gifts in our darkest hours. And it came to me when I needed it too. Without it, I don't know what I would have done. I don't know if I would have been able to hold things together. But it's powerful. And I believe that it will always look out for us. Sophia. Is that how you survived Drakenheim? I, I don't really know. I don't really know for certain. All I know is that ever since I was young, Dinah's taught me things. And I listened. And Dinah's helped me be able to do a few things here and there. And I've had a few other friends that have given me a bit of advice. But I'm no mage born. That depends who you ask. I know you weren't born a mage, but these powers that have been granted to you, similar to Wrath, and most people consider Wrath mage born. From a very young age, you acquired magical powers. You've had them your whole life. You can cast spells, I presume. I have a few. Dinah has taught me a few things, yes. This could be a problem for our negotiations. If your secret is discovered, you have to understand that that puts me at risk. My secret has been a secret for decades. And far up here in Helink, I have no intention of leaving. Cousin, I don't mean any harm. Uh, Sebastian chimes in. I was here for 24 hours and I found out your secret. I found your mage's tower. I got questions about that as well. It's, it's not, it's not good enough. You're Sebastian Crow, notorious troublemaker. Thank you. It's no wonder that you figured things out. And I've been a little careless with all this matter with of late. I don't mean to cause any harm. I simply wish to take care of my people and do my part to help my family. I have an idea on how we can help each other. And you have to understand that we need to meet in the middle in order to avoid unneeded complications with me becoming king. We are in the midst of a very fragile alliance with Illyria 
and we are also in the midst of trying to pull together the nation of Westmar. Both of these things rely on a lot of people trusting me, having faith in me, and me being able to be honest with them. I've never been much of a liar, but I would like to appoint you as head mage of this mm -hmm. castle. You stay here. You will, we will find somebody to elect for the time being. I think that we say the throne is empty in healing. You become the right hand of whoever gets elected. And since I will be king, when it comes to matters of healing, when I come to listen to you and whoever is elected to lead, your say will obviously matter if you understand what I'm putting down. Cousin, if you wish to strip me of my titles, it is certainly within your rights and is certainly your duty as king to do so. But I feel that it is in your best interest to overlook this. That puts a lot of things at risk. You're not understanding me. I'm, I, I mean, I guess we're alone in this room, but I'm saying we place a figurehead here so that people looking in see somebody on the throne who has no magical powers. But I will be talking to you on accounts and matters relating to Helic. Wilhelm, I do not wish to bore you with the politics of the North, but I have managed to keep the Counts and Barons of the North in a cohesive group with each other for the, since the end of the Civil War. I don't know who you have in mind to replace me, but if you want the might and military of the North, you want the might and military of the United North. And if you strip me of my title, the North will have no army. It will have the war bands of two dozen barons who are now arguing over who's going to be the new Duke. So you can do what's right, but you came here for an army and I'm offering you an army. And if you want that army, all you have to do is forget what you know. Well, she is right. <laughs> she will be a, a loyal ally. She has a wizened protector. And she can continue to fulfill her duties here. Ralph, if anybody finds out, they will have my head. Well, how do if we If anyone know that finds out, you can take it. But hopefully, they won't find out. Hats and clothes. <laughs> <clears throat> the problem is, I think, we think, that someone might already know. Yeah, um, about that. Uh, Sophia, pardon the formalities. Pluto, I need you to draw your sword. Ignatius! And do the truth thing. Oh yeah, okay. I compel you, Sophia, to tell us the truth. The, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help you, Bruce. Queen of Thieves, what do you know about her? I know that she's Katarina Von Castle. Has she been here? Yeah, she has. Are you working for her? No, I answer only to Di Dinah and whoever is the rightful ruler, and she's not. And why, what, why, yeah, go ahead. And what about my daughter? What if you brought in with her and the Queen of Thieves? 
The Queen of Thieves was here several years ago. She brought me some books and I found out a few things, but it wasn't until recently that I heard the rumors and learned who she was. What kind of books did you bring you? Does she know you know magic? Maybe. <laughs> So, so yeah, that's a problem because she's kind of our sworn enemy. I. She could use that information to I this purchased whole thing some apart. delirium from her and some spell books from her because I figured that I would need them. So she definitely knows. She definitely so knows. so this whole this whole thing falls apart, Sophia, because you can't <laughs> promise us that they won't go after Wilhelm when literally our number one enemy can just be like, yeah, well. Sophia knows magic, so uh, the king was just going to let that fly. And you know she's going to use it against Wilhelm. A hundred percent. You know she is. She probably already has, without so, us even knowing. So now we're in a situation, and you are in the middle of the situation, because we don't have an army without you being on the throne, you say. You don't want to step down from the throne, but our number one enemy knows the secret that you just told us that nobody would find out. So what do you want to do with that? That's up to you. I'm simply telling you that if you want the army of the North, if you strip me of my title, you won't have it. Okay, what if we don't strip you of the title, but you give up the cat? <laughs> you give up the cat, you stop magic. Don't talk insanity. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible. I, whatever I have, I can't unhave it. Oh. Can you just, Bruce? Yeah, can you just be like Bruce? I don't want it anymore. Not him. No, we need. No, him no, to not have you. It. But is that an option? Can Bruce? I'm so sorry, Sophia. It. They do not comprehend. They speak. The notion of the knowing. pact changes one forevermore. Oh. Well, then there's no option. No, there is an option. We just have to get to the Queen of Thieves first. What? She has always stayed ahead of yourself, Pluto and Veo. But with the help of myself, Bruce, Rudy, and Wilhelm, she's no match. What if? What if we put someone on the throne that that isn't magical, but we can trust? That, I don't know, is of similar to the people. I know they don't have the the same uh, history that you have, but someone who's of sturdy mind and body. Quite simply, and I'm just trying to help. You are outsiders here, and here in the north, we have always stood apart from the rest of the nation. If you want to meddle in the politics of the North, that is your prerogative. But I am offering you stability here. And if you want to destabilize things up here, then you're gonna have a whole other host of problems. I'm as I know that there is a risk there's only one other person outside of this room that knows your secret, correct? Correct. Sophia, I have one last offer. We need you to help us capture the Queen of Thieves. Very well. Huh. If it will keep my secret safe, I will help you. I suspected once I found out that Kat was the Queen of Thieves, I suspected that if she was going for a bid for the throne, that my hypothesis is that Katarina might mean to, or at least at some time, plan to openly challenge the edicts. 
There are many in the north and west of Mark that despise the edicts. There have been numerous nobility, because you know this, Wilhelm. Even your family's bloodline, House von Kessel, was still related to House von Draken. And House von Draken goes all the way back to the vassals of the Sorcerer Kings. The nobility of Westamar has had Mageborn entangled in our families for generations. And there are many noble families that would very much like the Articles of Inheritance to be undone. And I suspect that, and had Katarina come to me with that, I would support it. I'm saying that I, I personally, for what it's worth, I don't fear the Illyrians. The Illyrians, I honestly believe that if the Illyrians wanted war, that a united Westamar could crush them on the battlefield. And I don't understand why you are so afraid of them. Because with a united nation behind them and with the support of Caspia, Caspia and Westamar could crush the Illyrians and force the Edicts to be rebuilt in a way that served us and that allowed the magical families of Westamar to actually still have some more power. But we don't have the support of Caspia. We have the support of one family. And it's the... Jackson's. <laughs> 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 Ow! Man, hold the sword over here! <laughs> but... So, but I will say, Wilhelm, like... You're so concerned about what the Illyrians think. Sophia, I don't want you to think that I'm afraid of the Illyrians. I need you to understand, and this is something you will be able to understand because it affected you too. Mm. Westamar has been in the grips of war for 15 years, and it took most of our family from us. It took so much from this nation. Mm -hmm. It's not that I'm afraid. It's that I was doing everything and am doing everything in my power to try to escape the clutches of war that have been grasping at Westamar's throat for 15 years. Mm. Another war was threatening us and I saw an opportunity to make peace. With Caspia on our side, a deal with the Illyrians and a united Westamar, there is no war. And for a moment, I know that mm. this continent is always stricken by somebody wanting to kill somebody else, but we could use a moment to breathe and to rebuild. Wilhelm, I know the war has affected all of us. It took my father, it took your father, but you should not fear war with your enemies. Your enemies should fear war with you. Everything I do is f for, the, for the good of the people. It's the rules. Everything I've done is to, certainly, to be kind. Certainly. You, Wilhelm, are a good man. And you should teach others to fear the wrath of a good man. I don't disagree with the fact that the edicts have been a hindrance. They've even caused rifts between myself and the Academy at times. And I have issues with the Academy as well, being forced into a position where it needed to be as secretive as it was, which I believe is the fault of the edicts, which caused what is now a directorate that is power hungry and corrupt. Hmm. I don't believe the, the Amethyst Academy is in the right. I don't believe that the edicts of Lumen or the Silver Order are in the right. I think that both have gotten too opposed to each other and too powerful in their opposition. Indeed. And 
we in the nobility have allowed the church and the academy to gain great power, and they no longer fear and respect the authority of the noble houses. That's true. Sophia, I, um, by all accounts, I, I agree with you. And I'm a little shocked to say that, but I will continue to try a peaceful approach. Certainly. But you have the armies of the North supporting you now. Don't forget that. I won't. And you will help us capture Katerina von Kessel. I don't know how to begin. Neither do I, but having an extra person on our side helping us out can't hurt, especially with the armies of the North. And the fact that Katerina has a sanctuary here, we could use that. I don't know how, but we'll think of something. Hmm. And if she does come back, do not answer to her. I won't. Pluto, Vale, Rudy, Wrath. Well, it seems that, that um, maybe one way to truly take away the power of the sacred flame and the academy is to give that power back to the noble houses. No. By ignoring the edicts of Lumen, which seems to only benefit those who wish to control things like magic, we could potentially leverage the great power of both magic and nobility. I do think that there is something important about not letting a Sorcerer King situation ever occur again. Mm -hmm. That is the original reason why the Edicts were formed, but... And one of the key reasons why we don't want Katarina on the throne. Yes. But I will say, the law that was written has been stretched and misconstrued to the point where it is debilitating. Mm -hmm. And that needs to change. And I will say, Wrath and Sebastian, for what it's worth, my issues are not with the Amethyst Academy, similar to the Silver Order. The Silver Order's intention and purpose was to uphold the Edicts of Lumen, which were designed to stop a rise of Sorcerer Kings. We need to hold on to that fact, but it needs to be redesigned. And the Academy was designed to protect Mageborn bring in children, and give them a place to learn. Mm. That needs to be protected. I agree. Especially, I'm in on this. My family is directly impacted by this. I want to make sure they have a space in the future where they don't feel threatened by the Illyrians and then pushing the boundaries on what the Edicts was originally about. Our war isn't against Illyria or the Academy. It's against those who are trying to bring everything to a battle always between the faith and the magic. And also against the Rattlings. And the Rattlings. And possibly Kat. Hmm. But, Sophia, we're with you. Hmm. Wonderful. I got one more thing to ask you, Sophia. You said you trust my daughter. She's yes. been your friend. Tell her the truth. Tell her everything and let her decide if she's in on this. I don't like keeping secrets. As much as I want to protect her, I think she's shown she can stand up for herself and she can make her own decisions. Okay. She deserves to know what's been going on here. I'll talk to her. All right. Well then, you, Packmaster, have a great responsibility ahead as well. Will you fulfill the charge that Bruce has given you? Yes. Excellent. And I hope I can call upon you when the time comes. He, we will rejoice in his great return. There will be much to discuss. Wilhelm, I do believe that you will need 
to still make your way to Altbrook, Dransman, and Toddsfeld. I will be in touch with you and do what I can about Katarina. Until then, you have the support of the North. Thank you, Sophia, and thank you for the wise counsel. It's actually been very much appreciated. And I think, I think uniting Westmar is the most important thing that we can do right now. Well, with that, with our negotiations in Helig complete, I believe our heroes shall be off shortly to their next destination. Altbrook? Mm. Altbrook, so indeed. Yeah. Bruce's uh, mouth. Bruce's mouth is where we're headed next? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh... Seems appropriate. Albert seems right, yep. Yep. Make it our way downtown. <laughs> mm. Albrook is where those those um, apothecaries that tried to kill Wilhelm were from. Oh yeah. Um, it's also where uh, Perrin's medium for the paintings is. Oh yeah. Uh, so lots of exciting stuff. Yeah, lots of threads to pick up when we head over to Altbrook. Yeah. Um, yeah. The healing chapter, though. Whoa. Whoa. Yes. Hopefully we're making good decisions. So We made the greatest decisions. High five, everybody. Yeah, yeah. we did it. Release Bruce from his confines. <laughs> what? Woo, Bruce from his so. confines, the cat's eye in hand. The cat's out of the bag. The, bag. the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> and an agreement of convenience, certainly with Sophia von Sneestrom. Uh, bold choice. Uh, I didn't... I didn't know if I was going to agree with you, but I actually, the conversation just felt, I felt like I, yeah, she makes a lot of great points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're on the same side. Like Wilhelm's, I don't think he's a big fan of the Edicts of Loom and the way that they're written. He's not a big fan of like, it is true that I think the Silver Order and the Academy are like these two opposing forces that like, it just kind of sucks and it needs, it's fixed. Well, you know, what's interesting is that so many times, right? You have these Kings and all that the the great magic users of the world do is grant them boons to like allow them to cast magic without giving them actual magic like what's the true difference all you're doing is now just having control over what that person can and can't do Hmm. by restricting their ability to learn the magic and only giving them what you think is fair so that's just that's just control Mm -hmm. so by allowing the ruler to decide who like the people or whoever the group is like i feel like that's a more fair like it's just they're just mad because they can't control Mm -hmm. interesting very interesting Mm -hmm. lots of interesting things ahead a big thank you as always to our stellar cast jill kelly and joe for playing and a huge thank you to kyle for all of the awesome stuff he does behind the scenes we love you kyle we love you we love you kyle love you uh, we also love our dungeon master, Monty we love Martin. Monty. Uh, Amazing. What a great chapter. Arguably one of my favorite chapters of the entire series. I, I'm just so going to throw fun. that out there. I had a lot sprinkle of, fun. of everything, you know? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, and also uh, we thank Kyle. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Um, and a big thank you to our Patreon supporters as well. Uh, they also keep things uh, running behind the, sc- the scenes, making sure that we can have uh, the setups that we do and really making a bunch of the work that we do here on YouTube and Twitch possible. If you are interested in joining our Patreon community, please follow the links in the description below. And don't forget to hop onto our Discord community if you join our Patreon. The Discord is exclusive for our patrons, but you can come chat with us about all things D&D or Drakenheimer, TTRPG, or anything else that you want. You can also join in on our monthly writers' rooms, uh, Q&As, and all the other fun stuff happening there. Uh, So be sure to join that. What about in our game tonight? Um, We used almost zero physical assets. But we actually had uh, um, some amazing artwork from Elizabeth Perot, uh, music by Tabletop Audio, and yes, some uh, figurines from uh, WizKids, and a boat, a really cool boat from WizKids, and and uh, our player characters from Hero Forge. So please check out and support some amazing creators. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store. You can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes shirts. Check out bid.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. 
And we got all new videos dropping all the time on YouTube as well, where Kelly and I cover everything D&D, so subscribe over there to get the latest from us. And you can check us out next Tuesday when we broadcast the campaign on Twitch. You can check us out from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can check out the video episodes of the show on YouTube or check us out as an audio-only podcast. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time in Drakenheim.